Hey you guys, Nathan back with another video. Portrait photography is something that is all over Instagram and all over the internet. Now the thing is, portrait photography is great, but sometimes you can edit your portrait photos to look a little bit better. And I'm going to be showing you guys some tips and tricks today. I will be using a free photo editing software called Photoscape X. But remember, you don't have to use Photoscape X. There's a lot of principles here that are general or known as universal principles that can be helpful to you as well. Nonetheless, let's jump into Photoscape X and look at eight different photos that I think can be improved. Um, and we're going to see what we can do here. So let's begin. All right, so here are the eight different photos. Uh, I have you know, a couple of my wife, I have one of myself, I've got a few that I found online, and we're going to begin by making some kind of nitpicky edits, but I think that could improve. So let's look at this. This is a great photo that was taken. Um, it's sharp, it's clear, it's great. Uh, but if we hop over here to the editor and we zoom in, there's some things that actually take away from the main subject of the photo because what you want to see is you want to see the person, you want to see their face, and everything should be pointing to their face here. And if there's anything that is uh, kind of distracting, it probably needs to be removed or muted to the point where it's not going to distract what you're looking at. So here's what I thought was that could be uh, improved with this image. Her jacket actually could be improved. The reason why is because there's a few strands of uh, fabric that are sticking out, which I thought was kind of strange, but I'm sure this can happen if it gets snagged or whatever. But you can edit this. You don't have to go back and retake the photos. You can go over here to tools. Of course, there's a lot of different tools in here. You guys can definitely check out my one hour beginner to expert training for Photoscape X. Uh, but nonetheless, the spot healing brush, which is one of my favorite tools, and is available on a lot of different software actually. Um, you actually are able to go into here and select an item and it will do its best to remove what you have selected and to kind of fill it in with the information that's around uh, the image, around the selected area. So I go in here, I select that, and I might have to click around a few times, but we look at what it was originally to what it is now and it looks so much better and it means that there's less little things that are going to be distracting. Right over here, same thing. A random piece of fabric that's out of place. We click it one time and it's done. Had a little speck there, click that one time and it's done. Uh, you can do this in a lot of different ways. There are some other nitpicky things that you could look at when you're taking a photo, like uh, over here you see the inside of her jacket. You know, there are some ways you could edit this, but it would be very challenging. I would leave it. Or if you could go back, maybe there's a way to have that part of her jacket held in more so it's not going to be showing the inside of her jacket because it just kind of takes away from things. Uh, but that could be kind of a nitpick type thing. One other thing that I could, uh, if we're looking at all the different edits that I would do to this, there's a few other things. There's this vertical line which, you know, you could take it out. It just depends on what you wanted the background of your image to be. I have a photo, it's actually not on our list of eight, but I think I'll just show it to you guys. Let me just pull it up real quick. Um, but it's a photo that I absolutely love because the background of it is just really cool. It has just a huge amount of uh, just neat qualities with it. Where in the world is it? I have lost my photo. Hmm. So silly. I lose my photos. It says it's in here though. <laughs> here it is. Okay, I found it for you guys. Sorry about that. All right, this is a photo. This photo, it just has so much cool background stuff in the background and that's why the photo just looks so great. Um, and I absolutely love it. It's, it's really cool. All right, nonetheless, in this photo, you could remove this line. How would you go about doing that? Well, it's actually using the same exact tool, the spot heel tool. You're going to go and you're going to select the entire line. You're going to get into her hair, so you're going to hope that the hair looks okay when you're done with it. And actually, it turned out all right. You might click in here to make it look a little bit more, less kind of strange or something. But you can do that and maybe you go in here again. Um, but basically, you can go back and remove that line. You might also remove down here. That might be a little uh, 
challenging. Turned out okay. When you zoom in, you'll be able to see exactly. But you can remove those different things, so it really just becomes her. And that's all that you want in this portrait photo. And you want the background to be pleasing, you don't want it to be distracting. So, um, that is photo number one. And I really enjoy making those different edits because it helps to bring out the subject in this portrait photo. Next. We have this photo. You got this guy. He's a real stud. He's he's gonna be that cool guy. He's got the hair going, everything like that. Um, and what could you do to change this? Well, there's a few things that I think kind of um, kind of take away from the photo. One, you have the some really nice colors happening here. Um, you got this real nice brown, and that has kind of the same thing in the background here, off to the top left. Uh, but then you have his jeans, great, all this stuff, really good. You can see where the photo begins to really start blurring out as you go back further. Um, is it a natural blur or is it a fake blur? I'm gonna guess it's a bit of a, a fake blur just because of the distance and some of these things. But one thing that I would edit out of this photo is you have this like blue dot, unnecessary. It takes away from the color scheme of the entire photo. You can just go in here real quick you can remove that, you can remove that. Um, and you know, if you're working with the original photo, when you make those different edits and changes, they will potentially look better, because this is only an 800 by 800 resolution photo. But you know, you can remove those different things in the back to keep that color where it needs to be. Also, you could remove this little drain spout thing. You know, it's unnecessary. You can remove those different things to help improve the photo, so there's less things that are distracting and more of just, boom, here I am, and you know, all that. I also think it needs like a Lamborghini or something in the background. So, you know, that's just me. Um, this next photo is actually a photo of my wife and I. Uh, this is back when we were just dating and I was just manly in love with her. And we had a photo shoot where my brother uh, and my sister actually, they actually went around taking photos and stuff. I think this is taken with a Canon 6. Ooh, is it a. D6 or is it a uh, 70D? I forget. Doesn't really matter. Uh, the photo turned out really well. Here's what I would do with it. When you're working out just for, when you're working with just the original photo, you can pretty easily just go in here and crop exactly what you want. I would suggest clicking something in here, whether it's four by five or five by eight or you know something like that, so you get a ratio that's kind of normal. Um, I actually could do this a little bigger, or maybe not as big. Okay, but let's say we click over here, and I didn't center it. Oh man, Nathan, what are you doing? Alright, so we go over here, we get it centered, it looks great. Now, um, it would be really cool, I, can, I think of too many things when I'm editing these portrait photos. Um, but let me go and edit a couple stuff a couple things in here. So one, you could edit out these lamps in the back. You could edit this light thing out here. You could click over here and remove this just with a spot healing tool. But of course, I've been showing a lot of that tool. There's some other things you could do to kind of make things look pretty nice. If you have something that you need a blur, there is a blur tool in here where you're able to just blur a specific thing. So if you want to blur something a bit more, whether it's text or something, you can go and blur it. You can change the hardness or the strength of it to make it look a bit more normally, a bit more normal. Subtract things from the mask. Mask. There's a lot of stuff in there, but uh, for whatever reason, the thing that's drawing me to how to edit this photo is kind of just a random thought that I had. So. Um, you couldn't put these subtle accent pieces in a uh, in a photo, like what I was saying with the last photo over here. You could put a Lamborghini in the back, or like you could do different things to really showcase more of what it is, but kind of in a subtle way. What you could do with this photo, which would be super funny, is if I were to go in here, and I'd go up to this light sign, I'd go to draw, I would select over here with the color pickle, picker, uh, go and select the background of this light change. And what I would do is I would go and I would remove this. And this is just super fun. 
I love it because it works a bit like a paintbrush. You know, it's not as hard of a line. You know, you can do different things in here. But what you could do... Okay, thank you. All right, what you could do with this is if you found a really fun little uh, heart uh, type of a thing or some kind of uh, emoji or something there, you could put it in there and like blur it or like do some different things to it and have like this really cute uh, where the the crosswalk sign has like a heart or like an in love or like something like that. Um, you know, the simplest way I suppose would be to go over to here. Let's see, I'm going to add text. That's right, it is in the insert. Insert text and what you could do is you could do. Um, I'd have to find a emoji or something. I think there is, oh, there's some different images, not images necessarily, it would be stickers. You guys, sorry for the random, random thing that I've uh, gone off on a tangent about, uh, but no, you could like put something in here. And of course, I'm sure there's much better ways to do it. No, um, but you know, it's those little things, those little accents that you can put into an image. And sometimes you edit them in later, sometimes you put them in at the uh, intentionally, and you just make it a subtle kind of edited effect. Another thing you could do is go and change the uh, darkness or just the kind of mood of the photo. Of course, this is going to be using things such as filters. So let's get that crop back to where I wanted it to go. Uh, going over here to filters, of course, you can go into here to just color correction in the beginning and do some different brightening, darkening, deepening, you know, different things like that. But you can go over to here to film and you can go and select some different edits in here to try to get the correct mood of the photo and some of these work really great some of them are going to be completely crazy but you can also change the amount from 100 to you know 150 down to 50 and really make these edits just look perfect um, you got like overlays and you've got different stuff in here and, you know some of them actually you know would look really great there's also some different light flare effects that you can put in here uh, and you can edit them and make some different changes with them. But it's those different things that you're able to do to help add a mood or kind of a feeling or some emotion to the photo that you're editing. So there's some other thoughts there with that photo. This one over here, this is just a picture of my wife. I was actually um, taking different pictures because I wanted to see how I could get the closest up photo of her eye and I was taking a bunch of different photos but this is just one that turned out to be more of a portrait uh, more of a portrait photo but basically you can uh, take it and the question you know is you know how do you edit it how do you make it look better and you know all those different things sometimes it's simply you know putting some different colors on it some different effects different things like that but really th when a uh, portrait looks really good it's when you nail the focus for sure and you also have a background that looks good like in this case it's as plain as possible because I wasn't trying at all honestly the photo that I was going for um, in here was uh, was like this photo and if you zoom in on this photo because I was getting as close up to her eye you zoom in and you got some really neat detail, some really cool stuff in here. But that was not what, uh, that's not what we're talking about today, but that's what I was working on with that uh, specific photo shoot, if you want to call it that. Um, here's one, just a photo of me, and you can definitely see, hey, you know, it's me. There's nothing too crazy about it, the background's blurred, but it's what I currently have as my profile picture, I believe. I may change that down the road, but if you just need something simple, you got it, but there won't be too much needed to edit um, in the photo. Here's a photo that I looked at and I said to myself, this photo is a portrait photography, you know, 
maybe at its best, but you know, it's something where it's so clean, it's so nicely done, let me tell you why. So, okay, first of all, she's wearing sunglasses. This is like the Casey Neistat uh, style of thing saying, hey, the human eye or the eyes can be something that can be kind of distracting at times and something that can take away from what you might be trying to communicate. Uh, because uh, a person's eyes demand attention in a photo and sometimes by just putting sunglasses on. Then instead of that, what you're looking at is you're looking at, oh, the great skin tones, you're looking at the uh, uh, her top, you're looking at uh, her bag, and you know, the colors are really nice and it's all really well edited. Here's something that I would potentially look at changing in here, and it's, you know, very minor. I would go in here and I'd say, okay, looks great, everything looks very uniform, looks very professional, looks great. I would actually remove this little dot here, you know. This little dot doesn't look like an actual um, streak on the ground. In my personal opinion, it doesn't look as normal as you might think. Um, so, you know, it might actually take a little bit away from the photo. So, a little bit of removing here, removing there, maybe going down here. You can see this is like a mispainted line. Maybe there's a way that I can remove that so it just looks like one line and it looks more uniform. Um, but no, that's just... Uh, little critique edit thing in here but overall absolutely love the photo it looks great uh very phenomenally done all right another photo in here uh, editing different things on a person's face you know like right now i think i have a zit or something that i popped on my face and i'm like oh boy what am i doing um but you know there's different times where you can remove different things if you want to like in this photo let's say we want to remove this guy's uh, mold that's right there you know, you can go in here, once again, spot healing, go into here, remove that. You know, you can make it not noticeable anymore. You can also go down here to the bottom as well and remove the logo that's on his shirt and make it even more simplistic, more minimalistic. Um, but then, of course, it doesn't look like it. It looks like just like a plain Jane t-shirt where that one's like, oh, man, made a little bit more sophisticated with the glasses and everything. You know, but it's those types of edits that continue to make these different photos, um, great. The thing is, portrait photography isn't too complicated um, as far as, oh, you just get a subject, you get them in focus, and then you blur the background a bit, and you, it's a cool looking background, and you're all set. And then it all comes down to that person's posing and things like that, and then it's going in and editing every little itsy bitsy detail and getting the colors exactly right. Um, here's one other photo. So a lot of people are taking portrait photos with their phones. And the problem is sometimes it misses that blur because it's happening uh, over software and it's not being done over hardware. Blur. Well, what you can do here, you can see that this spot, it did not blur correctly. Uh, and you can go over here to the blur once again. You can click into here. And what I would do, uh, if I were you, I would mess around with the hardness, the strength, all this different stuff. Because what you're going to get is it's going to look like a blur, but not really like how the blur on your camera may have looked. And you can go and increase the strength and stuff to the place where you like where it looks. And you can get it to you know, a really good spot. Um, sometimes I use portrait mode on my camera. Uh, I mean on my phone. But there's a lot of times nowadays where I just leave it off because I know that it will look really solid. Um, and then I can make that edit later if I really really want to but what's nice is a lot of times when you take a portrait photo it also takes the original so you can kind of mess with it in this case it was just a little fix that needed to happen so that's what my thoughts on portrait photography are definitely as I continue to do more of it I will learn and that kind of knowledge will continue to morph into something that may be a bit more refined but I want to share that with you guys uh, just know that when you're looking at a portrait photo and you're trying to think of how to edit and fix something like that, here's what you have to remember. Um, you're going to think of things and you're going to say, oh, I would love to do this, I would love to do that, but there's many times where you don't have the uh, knowledge of the tools that are out there in the world or in your software that you're using to 
uh, that those things are possible. So you think of an idea and then you throw it away because you don't think that it's possible or you think it might be too hard. That's why I would encourage you to learn your software really well, look up tutorials online, uh, whether it's for Photoscape X or others, and watch those to learn the tools so that you can have that fuller uh, ability to being able to edit a photo exactly to the place that you'd want. So you guys, let me know if you enjoyed this video, like it for sure, uh, if you were, uh, if you got any value out of it, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.